Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Fed Heads, welcome back to another episode of Cigar Chat. Uh, as you just heard, uh, we got a special guest tonight. I'm your host, Trip. We are live on Facebook, broadcast around the world, the Armed Forces Radio Network, uh, and of course, available as a podcast on your favorite podcast catcher uh, or on YouTube if that's how you prefer taking in your video media. Um, I'm here with my co-host, Jason. Jason, how are you doing tonight? Doing great. Great. And our special guest of the evening, Hector Alfonso Sr. from Espinosa Cigars. Gentlemen, how are you? I'm great. I'm looking forward to talking to you about uh, Espinosa. Uh, I mean, I was going to leave it up for a little while to, for some suspense, but you guys are doing real good on the, uh, on the top 25 circuit this year. Look, man, not that I've been keeping track or anything, but we placed 44 cigars, 44 cigars on the on top 25 list this during the award season, as I like to call it. Yeah, we have. It's I'm telling you, uh, for a factory of our size to do that, I just think it's incredible. I mean, I, I really do. I think it's a uh, it's a tribute to to what we've done over there. So what Eric's dream and his idea to put together. Mm-hmm what uh we've done for ourselves plus uh you know the people that we make cigars for the cuba ricanos killing it they're just killing it oh yeah i mean uh a term and you know you're gonna you've you've learned uh you've got a little you've got to know me a little bit in the last couple of weeks i'm a yeah. huge cigar nerd yeah of course i'm a, <laughs> I'm a huge <laughs> I cigar think, nerd like most people in the industry are uh, it's easy to think that somebody's just doing this for their job um but i would say like more than half. I, I don't no, know but, a percentage, but more than half of people are just nerds. But when I say I'm a nerd, I mean I think that I would I would fall in line in the cigar media. I think I just <laughs> I would I, I do I'm telling you, I mean uh I, I don't know anybody else in the industry who, who does a top twenty five. I do my own little top twenty five. Oh, do you? Of I course. That. I can't share it with anybody because <laughs> you know you don't want to hurt any feelings and you know I do my I do my own list with the stuff we make, which is all top twenty five obviously. And then I do with the stuff I've had during the year. I mean, I don't know. I personally don't know anybody who smokes as much stuff outside of my own stuff than I do. I smoke Good. a boatload of stuff. I have a great I have a great boutique store here in Miami. Caribbean is, is fantastic. I don't know if you guys, next time you're in Miami, if you're ever in Miami, I'll take you down there. I mean, uh, Miami is a tough cigar market. I, I've because, heard, uh, is that the shop that On goes to? On says that he's oh talking my God. to I've turned, you that shop all, all the time. I've turned on all those guys on <laughs> Joe Grow. It's the unofficial. Uh, it's the unofficial pink Cadillac stop when Coop's in town. Uh, I've taken everybody down there. Uh, Jack Tarano, uh, he has the sign in the front. Jack smokes here now. We make fun of Jack. Doesn't really smoke there that much because he's busy, man. Jack's all over the fucking place. Yeah, Jack's all over the place. And oh. uh, <laughs> sorry, sorry. It's all right. It, like I said, it happens. Um, you know, I, uh, I, I wonder what the. Shitting, but. I wonder if Aaron Loomis, uh, the guys from Developing Palace, they're running a – they sent me a list with the over and under on things I'll say during the interview. <laughs> so the one thing he didn't send me was the over and under on bad words. So I'm already at one. So, But I'm going to try to keep that under three. I, I think I, I think I can do that. But, right. I mean, I, I, I love smoking other guys' stuff. I love – you know, because that's where it's at. So, you know, you, you appreciate some of these other things. You know, you, you can get an idea what direction you want to go with with new things. But – to get back to your regular to your previous question, yeah, man, we've had an incredible. I mean, the uh, what's the term? Me and you have been we've been chatting a little bit during uh, yeah during some of these reveals, <laughs> and my my new favorite term is the collective cigar media. Yeah, uh, as you I as noticed you heard, that flying around a lot. That's uh, that's my new term. I'm borrowing it from uh, from them, and uh, I've got I've got an over and under on that too. So uh, they. <laughs> You know, you got to bring him in on the loop. He doesn't know what I'm talking about, but he doesn't figure it out. Uh, the collective cigar media. Every I looked, uh, where these guys are everywhere, and where it's not them, it's the Cornelius and Anthony guys. We yeah. made, you know, we made nine lists as well. We were on the, we did, uh, we're in cigar aficionado. We uh, we made yeah, which coops. is, I mean, as much as people in the industry love to say that cigar aficionado, or I would I would say people who are nerds but aren't in the industry. Love to say that Cigar Aficionado's list doesn't matter, but it, that's like the number one sales driver in the industry. 
It uh, is. If that, you're on that list, you're going to move some boxes. Look, when I, I worked retail for a couple of years during the recession here, when uh, you know we lost, the uh, the mayor tried to balance the, the, the budget of the county on his employees' backs. So that was a direct, a direct political message there. I'm about to retire, so I, I don't care. So uh, they, uh, I started working retail at the cigar store. And these guys would come in, end of December, early January, you know, with their list. You know, and they want the stuff that's on the top 25 list. I mean, it is. I mean, a lot, a lot's changed in these 10 years since I worked in retail. You know, you have a lot, a lot more lists. You have, uh, I think the, the internet, the, the internet social media, uh, the internet cigar media has really, has really developed. Uh, it's not just the print media anymore. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I think that it, it's these lists. I love these lists. I love these lists because, uh, <laughs> all right, I love and I hate these lists. Some of these lists, you know, some of these lists, you look at them and they went, man, these guys, these guys really went out of their way to try things all across the spectrum. Mm -hmm. And then I look at some of these lists and I said, well, it was just too cold in Cleveland and they just couldn't go more than 10 miles. So they got whatever they had at that store. I mean, when you have a list and you have, you know, five cigars from the same manufacturer and there's 10 spots, come on, bro, work with me here. You know, Mm -hmm. (laughs) work work with me here. I get it. Yeah, I hear you. And, and then when you have a, a, a big list, you know, 25, and you have five on there and you're, you have no regrets. Dude, I get it. You like that guy. I get it. All right. <laughs> Let's move on, you know. <laughs> Let's move on. Uh, you know, I, I think maybe some of these cigar lists are victim to what happened in sports in the 50s where you had regionalism. You know, if oh, you yeah, lived. Absolutely. You know, if you lived in, if you lived in St. Louis, you were a Cardinal fan or in Chicago, you're a Cub fan. And you were a Cub fan or a Cardinal fan 400 miles from as far as the radio signal could take you. You were still a fan, and I think that that may have a lot to do with it. And I'm going to tell you, being in Miami, Miami is possibly the, the worst cigar market because everybody, nobody here is impressed. Everybody here <laughs> knows somebody who's in the cigar. I mean, I'm talking about the ones not in the industry, the ones who, the clientele, the customers. Everybody yeah. knows somebody in the cigar industry. For You know, the guys at my store. I sit down there. Some of the reps sit down there. Uh, guys who are bigger than, you know, much more popular than me come to the store. They sit down. You know, they rub shoulders with these guys. They're not impressed. You know, oh, uh, you know, I could get you 10 percent on a box. Oh, please. My sister knows the lady who cuts that guy's <laughs> hair. And, you know, I can get him at 30. It's, it's that kind of it's that kind of thing. But I love top 25 lists. And I like when I'm close for two years. That's was, always I'm, fun. It was. Let me tell you, I was 41 of 50 going into this year. And this year I didn't wow. have a great. <laughs> yeah, but I didn't have a great year this year. <laughs> I, I pegged the first. I pegged the top five. I pegged the top yeah, five. Yeah, the top five were. uh were no huge well, surprise. I mean, yeah, it was, it was, you know, it was, it was an immemorial. The first, you know, yeah. the top three were an immemorial. Even the fourth one, because Fidel died, you know, a little more over a year ago. So let's throw Cuban in there. And, you know, uh, I only, I went 18 to 25 this year. I didn't do great. So, but I like, I, and you good. look, I look at the list. I value the list this way. I look at the list and then I start to, comp- I start to compare and say, hey, these guys, you know, not just for myself or for us. Hey, we're here. We're here. We're here. Wow, I'm more surprised when we're not on the list. I know this sounds bad, but I mean, I'm more surprised when we're not on the list. I don't mean just Espinosa. I mean Lozona. When we're not on the list, then I start to wonder why we're not on that list. In some yeah. instances, I know why we're not on that list, but that's just those. That's just how that's, some people have that problem. But for for the other ones, I'm like, well, you know, maybe they haven't heard of us. I'll reach out. Hey, mm-hmm. man, you know, I'd like to send you some cigars. Try this. And are you going to come to the show? A lot of them still don't come to the show. They're not big enough to come to the show. We, we, we have tried to be very friendly and open to the, uh, to the cigar media because, let's face it, uh, outside of Eric sitting in a B&M for 30, 30 weeks out of the year yeah. and, you know, and, and Junior now traveling and, and Tim Wong, who's our, our, our guy in the West Coast, and David Palm, who's our guy in Carolina, and Scott Lewis in Texas. The only the only way that you're going to find out about our cigar unless you run it unless you run across it at a BNM is by reading it on some of these media posts. So we yeah. got to be friendly. We have this resource for us. We'd be ridiculous to turn our back on. Yeah, of course. Um, Jason, did you have a question queued up? Um, actually, before before I let you ask your first question, I do want to mention uh, Bob Lang made Bob Dog happy birthday, Bob. It was his birthday oh, uh, yesterday or the day before. Um, he said, didn't somebody award Lazona Small Factory of the Year? Uh, and that was Coop for three years in a row, which is 
Uh, Let me, very impressive. That 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 award really means a lot to me personally. Not just because we won it, but I know some of these guys who have small factories in Nicaragua, mm-hmm. and they put out they put out great, great, great cigars. And I'm fans of their tobacco. I think what's helped us is that the sheer volume of what we've done for other companies as well as ourselves. You know, yeah, we've been successful, and then the you know the Cuba Ricano has been successful, La Juala was successful, uh, uh, Cornelius and Anthony is is making their mark. We're we're making cigars for other people, and it all comes back to Lazona and it's, it's, it's helping us. I mean, you know, we're, we're lucky that we are, we're making so many brands for other people as well as ourselves. I think it helps multiply and get the word out there for us, but I'm very, I'm very, very happy uh, that we've gotten that award. It's, I mean, to get it once was great to get it twice. was incredible to get it three times. I'm almost embarrassed because, you know, I can just imagine the grief that, that Coop is taking, but you know, Coop, Coop doesn't care. You know, he doesn't care. He, he's got his pink Cadillac and he's doing <laughs> And he's doing his thing, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's one thing for Coop is is um, no matter what you think, he's he's as unbiased as they come. He puts all his biases aside when he's reviewing or uh, giving out these awards. Frankly, uh, I, so- I I I really I I really come to uh, I, I like Coop personally. I I I like him as a person, you know. And mm-hmm. but I I I would not want to be him. I would not want to. He has. The I think the you look at some, you look at him sometimes you just look like the world is just weighing on him the shoulder the weight the weight of the world is on his shoulders you know and I know what you mean you know he's uh, you know he 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 rates I I mean I'm pretty sure I know it had to have happened this year he rates a cigar that's that a lot of people love and it falls in his top thirty but it falls maybe ten or ten spots or seven spots for where everybody else thinks it should be and he's getting a crap of shit I mean uh, that's two he's getting a oh, yeah. he's getting he's letting a load of crap. That you know, hey, you know, he's he's just you know he's being honest, and I think he's he's really made his commitment to, to you know, uh, uh, that whole pink Cadillac and no no teaser. And he, he wants to be to me. He's that guy with the at the pounding. The I know he has a I know he has a typewriter. He's not fooling anybody. He's not using a word processor. <laughs> he's got a typewriter. He's got the little visor, the little lamp at the side. And he's just pounding it out, and you know, and and I think it's great. And let's not forget our guys in California with the incredibly complicated system the developing palettes guys that I oh still yeah don't try. i mean sheldon cooper looks it looks like sheldon cooper put that system together i mean you know you <laughs> yeah this and that and, uh, so, so i mean i i love the list i love the list i love the list and i where i used to get angry i just i've i've, I've just tried to i've tried to come to the conclusion that you know you just some people you just gotta let them you know screw them. I mean, letting, <laughs> that's where i'm at with that <laughs> All right, Jason, now I'll let you have a turn. Okay, so we talked about top 25 lists and stuff. Let, let's quickly go around and talk about what we're smoking here. Um, oh, that's a good idea. I'll, I'll start. I'm smoking the Espinosa Habano, and oh. I think this is the old band because that's I the think old the band cigar. change. So th- this has got to be a few years old. That's at least, that's at least, that cigar's at least two years old, minimum two years old. Okay. See, th- it's weird because in my mind, I feel like this this was new not that long ago. But I guess time just flies by. No. Well, you know, let's be honest. How many cigars? You know, how many cigars do you see? You see a lot of cigars. I mean, you guys, you guys get cigars every day, or you you, you buy, you get them in the mail. You mm-hmm. come across, you know, they just tend to get filed in the back, filed in the back. Next thing you know, oh, hey, what the hell is this? Oh, 2013. How did this? And how did I not see this? That absolutely happens to me. Yeah. You know, I found in my, I'm going through my humidor the other day, and I found uh, a Corona that we made four years ago for a tweet up, the tweet, the Chattanooga tweet oh, up. Oh, yeah. I didn't, I thought those were all gone. I thought, you know, it's, it wasn't a unicorn. It was a dinosaur that I found, you know. <laughs> oh, what is this? Yeah, I lit it up. It was good to go, man. I smoked. It was, it was great. <laughs> Have you ever had the, uh, the old, Oh, I forgot I bought a box of those. Well, I, I, <laughs> I get that gonna, once in a while. I'm not going to lie to you. I, I don't I don't buy cigars. So <laughs> uh, that's all right. <laughs> I, I will use the oh, man, I can't believe I had a bundle of this at home or I had a bundle of this in my car. That's pretty much more what it, what it is. You know, <laughs> I can't believe I had these. You know, where did these bunker bunkers? Where did these bunker busters come from? I don't remember. 
or this original Warhead, which I smoked one the other day from, I smoked, I was at the cigar shop and I took a, I took one of my cigars, I took a cigar to the, to the owner and it was, uh, the, the, the Warhead, our first Warhead with a test label on it. <laughs> wow. No, I mean, that's, that's, that cigar's four, five years old almost. Yeah, it's fantastic. So yeah, I, I, I do run across a lot of that. To answer, uh, I am smoking a Lonsdale, a Laranja Lonsdale. That's oh. only that's oh. only available in the exclusive Laranja box that we do for the friends and families and our lounges. It has okay. uh, that Laranja box has three sizes that we don't make normally for uh, retail. We don't make we don't have a normal pr- production. We have a Bellicoso. Uh, we have a six. We have a five. I think it's a five and a half by fifty eight. Uh, semi kind of semi pressed, big robusto, and then mm-hmm. we have this Lonsdale. And this Lonsdale is. It's. I think it's. I think it's superior to the to the Lancero just because it's a little more meat to it. Yeah. You know, but it's 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 a fantastic stick. I'm very very happy with it. Lanceros are great, but I always tell people I still prefer a Lonsdale. Um, I just think Lonsdales really have more of that. Uh, uh, they just have a little bit more body. Oh well, yeah, sure. Did you just turn oh, your course. phone? Is that what just happened? Me? Oh. I'm sorry. I'm it's okay. It. I'm holding okay. it. I don't. Cause I, the, I think uh, it was sideways before because my video just like the video on the uh, on the stream just got messed up and it confused me. I, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I can't find my lighter, so I'm oh, kind no. of squir- I'm squirming all around here trying to find it. But I'm gonna find it. Go ahead. I'm gonna. I'm That's gonna, awful. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look for it. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. I gotta hold the phone. We had some technical difficulties with this uh, this microphone on the uh, on the laptop. But we'll uh, we'll take care of it for next time I'm on. For next week, I'll, yeah. I'll definitely take care of that. All right, um, and then I'm smoking the new hotness. If you'll focus here, I uh, I was just telling Jason I love the band on this. I'm gonna pull it off in a second. If it'll ever focus, come on, man. Come on, there we go. Trying. Oh well. I well, love that. I love that cigar. I love that cigar. I love. I love what it tastes like now. I mean, it just tastes the way we wanted it to taste. Don't get me wrong; the first Musilago in the red box, we it was a, we were very happy that we that we got the blend because that was a blend that uh, the the previous the previous manufacturer uh, didn't tell us what the blend was, so we had to ret, you know we had to re- retro engineer that, reverse engineer that, and then once we had it, we just the one thing it was missing was it just hadn't sat; it just didn't taste like it had sat enough. So, you know, then we, you know, we started making it at, uh, at, at the New World factory there in uh, Ocotal for, with AJ and, you know, the tobacco he's using has got a couple of years on it. So it was just perfect. I mean, you know, and, uh, well, we're going to, are you guys going to sit and re-blend the cigar? Uh, no. We, I sat down with him. I said, this is what it has in it. He goes, well, you know, you never know. We opened it up. He goes, yeah, you're right. That's exactly what it has in it. I told you this is what it has in it. So yeah. that's it. That was the, the shortest, the shortest blending session ever. All right. There's the a, band. Uh, and that's a bad, that's a pretty bad band, I think. It's I think a, that band is cool ass. It's a nice band. The thing I was telling Jason that I really like about it is how it's like, you pull it off and it's symmetrical. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. this is the kind of band you could take it off and you could mount it on something, like stick it on as like a sticker almost. Well, because sure, if you want, if you want to right start, shape. if you want to do that, though, make sure that you send any, whatever, just cut, cut us in for whatever you're, uh, you're sticking it on. If you're going to start doing thumb drives <laughs> with it, just... <laughs> Just hook a brother up, bro. Send a little money our way. You know we. Uh, you know, we're, yeah. Once we're, I start hitting it big with selling, uh, <laughs> selling used Luxiolaco <laughs> bands, I'll let you know. All right. Um, so what else we got going? We're getting some questions. I'm trying to. I was trying to fix our video here, so now we're good on the video. Okay. Um, Bob Dog says mm, Bunker Busters. Those are good cigars. Mm-hmm. Um, I, Jack Bonio says from. says that you still get angry about the lists. Who? Exactly. Jack Taranya. You know, he used to smoke there. He smokes down the street now. No, I let me tell you something. That is the most that was the the weirdest friendship I've ever developed with anybody. Because he's just like, you're gonna we're gonna be friends. I'm like, okay. You know, he's only six five and you know, he's only a foot taller than I am. So, you know, all right, so I guess we're gonna be pals. But you know what? He is he's one of the funnest guys to be around because it's one of those, you know how you are when you're you're always kind of the guy talking, and you're, it's because oh, yeah. I'm around him. He does he, he does all the talking. I get to be the straight man, and everyone nice. is. And it is great, you know. And 
and you know he knows everybody, and you know, and and people tell him the most un- the most incredible crazy things. You know, he they tell him, and he's uh and he's he's a lot of fun. He, he really is a lot of fun. I'm I'm I hope he's not listening because I don't want him to know how much I really enjoy his company. So <laughs> but that's it. Um, so Bob Dog had another question, which is: Are there any brands that are working on moving into Lizona, uh, like taking on? Lazona as their factory. He's, any new he, brands? Yeah, he's curious about if you guys are getting any new clients for the factory. Bob Bob sounds like he's got a little inside information. Uh, <laughs> he might. I don't know. <laughs> he might. There, we're we're kind of up in the air with some. We're we're a little up in the air on that, just because. Uh, to be honest with you, I really believe that this year we're gonna need to, we're gonna need really need to focus on the stuff we have going on. I mean, wh- where do you, where do you cut, where do you cut corners? You stop making Espinosa? No. You stop, you slow down uh, Cornelius and Anthony? No. Cuba Ricanio? No. And, you know, we've, we've gotten to the, we've gotten to the spot right now where we have the right number of rollers, the right, for the right consistency, for the right number of supervision. We're, we're, we're right. We're good right now. I don't see us unless it's something that's like a, a piecemeal thing. Or a band-aid, I don't see us taking on anybody new. But you know, I work for Eric, so that could change tomorrow. So. Yeah, <laughs> yeah um, that, that's what that's what I was thinking. The uh, the fact that you guys had to move some of the production out of the factory speaks to the fact that you guys are 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 nearing or at capacity. We're close, I think, uh, because you you wouldn't move those brands out of the factory unless you have to. Um, mm-hmm. And when your factory is only a X amount of rollers, you can't just start sticking them in closets and stuff. It doesn't work. Where are we going to put them? Sure. Absolutely. What are you guys speak- drinking? What oh, I'm drinking? drinking some beer. So this, this is some, a nice IPA. This is from a local brewer called Mazama. This is their experimental juicy IPA. Number three. Okay. That sounds cool. What are you Man, my, I have I some of this. It's another local brewery. It's a winter oh. ale, the Abominable. That's a good one. Uh, really so cool. Speaking of the factory, a thing that I've been to the factory twice now, and both times there was nobody who spoke English there, so we had to have our our. Uh, that's what you get. That's what you get for going without an appointment. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Well, then, no, that's exactly what happened. It was like Logan texting Eric, being like, hey, can we swing by the factory today? Um, oh, Logan, and then we had Logan, to have a translator. Logan was with you? Yeah. Couldn't happen to a better guy. All right. So, <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Actually, we've made nice. We've made nice in the last few weeks. Good. Yeah. I, I you know, it's, you know, we're, we're kind of similar people, so I can, I can, I can, I can relate to that. But uh, so how was that tour? It was great. A, the thing that I find really interesting about the factory is – it is one of maybe two factories that I've been to that are in a building that has no reason to ever be a cigar factory. Absolutely. It's, it's an old, it looked, it used to be like an old Hacienda kind of like apartment kind of thing, you know, a little <laughs> villa and the flow is not perfect. I mean, <laughs> we make it it's, work, but it's, it's, it's definitely not perfect, not, but it's cool. Not That's perfect. It is thing. cool. It's like you come out onto the deck and then the Escaparada is right there. The, the, I, I think, with the exception maybe of Drew Estate's big big poolside thing, mm-hmm. which got that great view, I don't. Uh, that's a fantastic view that we have. That view the, yeah. of the of the mountains and and the, one of the most dangerous intersections on Esteli right there. That's uh, that's fantastic. I mean, you know, you get to see accidents. You you get to a little eye candy. Uh, you have the view of the mountains, and at least once every couple of days, there's a funeral. You know, they they have a little procession walk down the street. That's always cool. I mean, you just uh, yeah. Uh, it's 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 an it's an excise spent many out many an hour out there having a cigar. Uh, and Bob Dog says that I should uh, take one of these and stick it on a lighter for you. So you've got a nice fancy Murcielago lighter. Well, you can you know, but you found it, something. I'm using the Tarano Jack Tarano lighter that oh, broke. Man. It broke immediately after you gave it to me, as you can see. So, but you know, Jack's everywhere, man. I can't. <laughs> even when even when you try to phase him out, he's everywhere. So yeah, I've got it lit. So I'm I'm kind of excited about that. Good. Uh, we're gonna take a quick break for one of our sponsors, and then we'll be right back with more questions for Hector Alfonso. 
brought to you by Gurkha Cigars. Gurkha Cigars, makers of the world's finest cigars. Try the 93 rated Heritage featuring Rosado, Ecuador, and Habana wrapper, Nicaraguan binder, and Dominican, Pennsylvanian, and Nicaraguan fillers. Blended by Gurkha's blending team at American Caribbean Cigars, it's hand rolled Nicaragua and available in 35 count boxes. Talk to your local BM about the Heritage today, or talk to them about other fine Gurkha cigars. Whatever your taste preference is, Gurkha has a cigar that's right for you. And we're back. Uh, t- cigar chat talking to Hector Alfonso from Espinosa Cigars and the Lazona Factory, uh, which is really part of Espinosa Cigars. But, uh, you know, I feel like it's important to mention it because that's the buzzword right now with all the lists coming out. <laughs> <sighs> yes, 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 yes. 44. Uh, that's, that's the magic number this year. Yeah, 44. that's crazy. Um, and I looked thir- on, on the... Uh, the list where they compile everybody's lists together, you know that the, one? The Collective Cigar Media. Yeah, the Collective Cigar Media list. Which, um, has, which, which I heard was very fond. That. Which I heard was, uh, I think the quote was, uh, it seems the Collective Cigar Media is very fond of the cigar. Yes, I've, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm familiar with that list. Um, I was looking at that list just to get like a baseline of some of the lists that you guys were on that I might have missed. And I think there were, I think it was 26 different cigars that were made in the Lazona factory were on that list, which is crazy. Uh, it, it was, it is. I mean, really, I, I'm telling you, we're, I'm sitting here and I'm, 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 I'm laughing it up. We're yucking it up. And, and, you know, I'm, I'm kind of, you know, little got a little big head thing going, but I'm going to be really honest with you. We are super humbled by this. You, you don't understand guys where we were six years ago. Well, in February, next month, it'll be six years that we started with an empty warehouse in Hialeah Gardens and him telling me, Hey, uh, we're, yo bro, we're going to do uh, we're going to start a cigar company. Uh, I mean, we're, that's six years. We've gotten as far as we've gotten because, you know, the majority is on the, on his back where we've gotten as far as we've gotten. And then we, you know, his son, and we've learned the business as we've gone along. I mean, we didn't know anything going into this. <laughs> the only guy who knew was him. And, you know, at the end of the day, he's, he, he's a salesman. He want, he's, he's most comfortable selling. And, you know, we couldn't, you know, we just didn't, we didn't have cigars at first. Yeah. So we, had to buy, we had to buy back our old inventory to, to, to be able to start, you know. And oh, yeah. that we're, where, we are to, where we are, the year that we've had, I mean, it'll be hard to repeat this year. We're very, but I mean, we're very, very humble. I know I am. And, you know, uh, you know the, these, these accolades are fantastic. But. You know, you scratch your head and you went, how did we, I've never heard, how did, how did that guy get our cigar? That guy, you know, you know, it's, it's, it's that kind of, it's been that kind of, it's been that kind of year. And, you know, I'm going to be honest, I'm going to tell you a story. There was a cigar that we made that after we made the cigar, I loved it. I thought, I thought the cigar was good, but I said, man, I don't know if this cigar is for everybody. And I, we made it for Cornelius. It was uh, the Senor Sugars. We mm-hmm. made that. Oh, we yeah. made that cigar. I made that. We made that cigar. I blended the cigar for for the guys from Cornelius, uh, and it has that proprietary binder. And he's like, I love this cigar. I don't know if you ever met Stephen Bailey. He's one of the nicest guys you've ever met. He's super, super a gentleman, you know. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, Steve, uh, maybe a little too sweet, maybe a little too strong. Hector, it's exactly what I want. Uh, okay. <laughs> So you know, uh, you know, we 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 got we lucky there. And then you, I don't know if you guys know the story. Protocol, the whole thing behind Protocol, I tried to kill Cancel and and Ives. I wanted to make a cigar so strong that they wouldn't they wouldn't ask me for anything else again. And you know, it, and it that becomes, was the blue. It was the blue, and then you know, and then, <laughs> and then from the blue comes the red, and then from the red comes the the themis, and you know, uh, I'm telling you, we're we're very. I know I'm very humbled and Eric is Eric will tell you that, uh, bro, you know, it, it was just our turn. I mean, we're, it's, it's where we're at now, but we, we've got to work harder. We got to work twice as hard just to, to equal what we did this year. I mean, next year things will change. I mean, you know, next yeah, year, that's why we have to, you know, we have to stay, we have to stay focused, you know, and, you know, and, and I'm very thankful, very thankful for the, for you know the, the, our our fans and you know our our not just the consumers but the fans we have fans we have people yeah. who love him who who come to the Lazona Palooza who you know who love Eric and just they just they 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 just every you know he's they they just follow us and 
anything we do, they love, you know, and, and I've got to be thankful to the, to the unbiased cigar media, you know, the, 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 they've been great, you know, and they, they've taken us where, where our salesmen and our fans can't take us. They've taken us there. So, you know, we, we're very thankful all the way around. Good. Jason, I'm going to let you ask the next question now. Um, yeah, it, it's interesting that you mentioned that, um, you said you guys have been around for six years, which to me, that's crazy. Cause like, I couldn't imagine the modern cigar industry without Espinosa and Lazona. It's become such a, such a staple in there. Well, well, I think that we, I think that, I mean, I don't know if you, I don't know if you guys are like sociology people or, I mean, I think the tipping point, the tipping point where the cigars and the internet kind of meshed, you know, and that's where we kind mm-hmm. of, you know, we, we, I don't, I don't want to say we've hit our apex. I think we're far from hitting our apex, but I think we kind of, as they merged, we kind of like jumped in the middle of that. You know, <laughs> we got a guy, yeah. we got a guy, we got a mm-hmm. caught right in the middle as they, as they became the little DNA helix. You know, we were right there. I mean, we, we just arrived on the scene at the right time. We, we made the, you know, we made the right, you know, we, we made the cigars that got us, got our foot in the door in a lot of places. And then, you know, Laranja was huge for us. Laranja, three years in, and here we have a cigar in the top 25. And, and like, I, like I said a couple of minutes ago, everything is, you know, we've gotten as far as we've gotten on, on his back. Not because of just the work he's done and what he's taught us is, you know, he knows people. He, you know, uh, he took us, you know, he was able to say, well, I, I think I'm, I'm going to go open here and I'm going to go here and I'm going to, you know, he was tireless. You know, and, and, and I mean, he is Eric. I mean, you know, he took us, he took us, to, he, he said, all right, we're going to go here. Come on, we're, we're going to do this. And we, we've just gotten very lucky. I mean, you know, it's had this been, had this been a year before, who knows, or a year after, maybe we would have missed it, but we just caught the tipping point at the right time. Yeah. Then I was thinking, yeah. um, we, we've been alluding to a lot of stuff, but maybe let's take a moment and run through the Espinosa, Lazona, and the stuff Lazona makes for other people, for people that aren't generally aware of, of that whole package of brands. Okay. Well, uh, Espinosa, you have, oof. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> All right. Uh, Test time. You can get all the answers to these questions at EspinosaCigars.com. No, um, all right, let's start with our our baseline, our our, our core line. We have Espinosa Havano, we have Espinosa Crema, which is a Connecticut, a Havano, which was in the running, which had the ratings to be in the running for uh, for the Cigar Aficionado Top Twenty Five as well. I mean, you know, it's, it yeah. was the Six Hundred One, but it was that one. That one. That one did a ninety-one above on all sizes. Uh, we have that one. Then we have the Especial, which is a cigar that I am going to push. The, I'm going to really push this one. year. Great cigar. It, it just, we have not given that cigar. That cigar came up at a bad time. That cigar got caught in the wake of La Ronja. Yeah, so, absolutely. So, so it's, you know, it's just like, one, that's why we skipped the Warhead one year. Because there was just, we just didn't want any more, another victim to the La Ronja, uh, the wake of La Ronja. So in the core lines, we have the Havano, we have the Crema, which is the Connecticut, we have the Especial, which is the the Mexican, and then we have the Alpha Dog, which is you know the is uh, our little tribute to him. Then we have Laranja, which is our, I guess our, our next level. We have Laranja, uh, the, which is the Brazilian wrapper, and then we have Murcielago. Uh, then we have the uh, the grandfathered stuff, the 601. Uh, we have La Bomba, the 601 La Bomba, and five or six different Bitolas. We have a very cool little Corona, the Saki Bomb, which I love. And then the F bomb for mm-hmm. the guy who just, you know, the guy who just can't get enough, uh, can't get enough workout on his mouth and wants to have TMJ, a big seven by seventy. <laughs> so we, we, we have the, uh, we have La Bomba, then we have the red, uh, the blue, the green, and we've made a, we made a few, we've made a few different colors for, uh, for some of the, some of the online mm-hmm. retailers. We have a six hundred one PA, we have a six hundred one white. That actually made the top twenty-five. Uh, I, I, it was it was a top twenty-five cigar on a couple of lists last year. Uh, we have the gold, we have the brown, we have the black, which is an old throwback to the six hundred one Connecticut. That six hundred one, that old six hundred one Connecticut was so good. Yeah. I haven't had the new one yet. Uh, it's I I think it's it's online. Uh, we made a Laranja for Desocio uh, out of Ali- uh, Alliance. Uh, we made a couple of we've made a couple of brands for our, our we call them the backroom series. 
which are just little some treats for our, our loungers and our friends and family. The alibi was the first, uh, then eminent domain, uh, wasabi, and a series of other ones that uh, we pushed out right right in August of 2016 to make sure that you know that because that was my goal. My goal is to make sure that uh, if anything happened, anything bad was to ever happen to me, you know, I didn't want to let this guy down, and I wanted to make sure that we had you know we had some footing for the next 10 years. So we have we're we're good. You know, we, 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 we busted our, you know, busted our humps to do it, but we're, we're good in that aspect. Then, uh, oof, we make cigars for Cornelius and Anthony. We make five out of their six lines. We make Venganza. We make Daddy Mac. Uh, the five out of six or four out of five? I think we make four out of five. Uh, we make Daddy Mac. We make Venganza. We make, uh, oof, Jesus Christ. I'm not doing very well, huh? Uh, it's a lot make of the aerial, right? We make the aerial and the and the, the Senor Sugars. Let me tell you something. That aerial, I really like that cigar. <laughs> I really, really like that cigar. Uh, then we do uh, the Cuba Ricano, the three sides, the three lines for Cuba Ricano. Uh, we also did the stuff for La Jugada, the Prado, the Havano, and then all of their little uh, the little side projects that they've done. You know, the the Num Chuck, uh, the Chinese Finger Trap, which was a fantastic cigar. The pickle juice, where if you can get past the whole, if you can get past, if you know, if you don't have a problem with the packaging like some people did. Yeah. It was a fantastic candela. Yeah, those are something. really good candelas. The two hardest things, and the wasabi that we that we that we got out and Coop got a hold of it, gave it a ninety three, a ninety three for a candela. That's a special kind of candela right there. So, we uh, we I, I smoked a lot of candela. And I realized something when we were working on the candela. There's a lot of bad candela. Um, there's yeah. a lot of bad candela. Uh, but there were a couple of great ones. And I really, uh, I really, uh, I, I think I really hit the mark. The pickle juice was really good. Uh, the two hardest cigars to blend so far have been the pickle juice, because I didn't smoke candela before that, and the, and the crema, because I'm not a Connecticut smoker. So none of us are. Nobody in the office smokes Connecticut. So we had to make that Connecticut, smoke it ourselves, look at each other and go, well, you know, let's find people who smoke Connecticut and put it, hey, you smoke Connecticut? Oh, I love Connecticut. Boom, smoke this. Oh, man, this is really good. Okay, great. Write that down. This is really good. You know, so, you know, that's, th those have been the hardest. Uh, that's it. That's who, that's who we're making cigars for right now. I mean, we do, uh, Eric does something for a store in uh, Pennsylvania, Renzulli, for Twin Smokes. Oh, we, we do a bunch of separate, you know, little side things. You know, we do Pier 28. For uh, for Tim Wong on the West Coast, mm. we, oh, yeah. we took we took it East Coast last year, and then we did the Maduro form, and we've got a bunch of we got a bunch of I don't want to say new, we just got a bunch of releases, uh, stuff that we're getting around to smoke, getting around to making, yeah, you know, so that's uh, <laughs> that's the that's the official word. Um, we've actually got a comment about the Connecticut's from Anthony Rasiki. Uh, he says with the. He said first. He says the Themis, aka Agathis and Hector. <laughs> uh, okay. But he says, yeah. The Crema, the Moya Ruiz Claro, the Ariel, and the Themis. Uh, he he just kind of says you guys did a great job of dip differentiating those blends because um, it's kind of yeah. easy when you've got what is that five Connecticut's to make them taste kind of similar. <laughs> well, sure. I mean, and, but the thing is that uh, the Claro we did for La Guala. And they want everything to, to sting their nostrils. Yeah. And then the the, uh, the the that was the Claro, the crema we did for us, and we wanted it to be a gateway cigar. We needed that cigar for the guy who would go to an event, love Eric, and say, "Man, everything you have is so strong," you know. So, or for the guy that wanted to smoke Espinosa but doesn't like a, a, a doesn't like a strong cigar or doesn't like a spicy yeah. cigar. So we had that gateway cigar for him. The Themis just falls in line with the the Cuba Ricano stuff. It's uh, it's a cigar that goes good with drinks, because <laughs> I mean, just gonna go, you know, it's a, you know, I like to call it my drinks and handcuffs cigar. It just goes, you know, it just goes perfect. And the the aerial was was different because we're blending it for Stephen, and we were using that that binder that that he acquired, mm -hmm. which was my first time ever working with it, and I didn't know. I don't think anybody's worked with that binder, so. When when we it was a completely new brand. It wasn't like oh let's just use the crema brand here. No, we you know you can't do that. I mean yeah, people don't get me wrong. There are people who do it, but you can't do that. 
You can't do that, especially when you have a, a customer who wants something who's distinct. They want something that's uniquely his own. You, know, yeah. you just you, you can't do that. It's just not it's not the right thing to do. Uh, we're going to take one more quick quick break, uh, and then we'll be back with more questions for Hector. This show is sponsored by Cigar Oasis. Don't spend all your time worrying about your cigar wrappers cracking, splitting, or falling apart from humidity fluctuation issues. Set it and forget it by choosing Cigar Oasis, a professional solution which provides equal distribution of humidity with precise electronic controls. Monitor your cigars through the internet using the smart humidor Wi-Fi attachment. Why don't you spend all your time enjoying your cigars and relaxing and let Cigar Oasis protect your cigars. Cigar Oasis has solutions for any humidor. Make sure you set it and forget it today. All right, welcome back to Cigar Chat with Smile and Hector. Um, I'm trying to find some of these. We had a couple of Facebook questions that I wanted to get to. Oh, Jim Bean, um, not with an M, not like the whiskey. Uh, he wants to know what the biggest challenge was over the six years of of kind of being part of the start of Espinosa Cigars. Uh, the biggest challenge. Well, the biggest challenge, uh, cigar-wise, the biggest challenge was trying to trying to get that hit, which we did with Laranja. That was... That was huge, and that, it came early, early. To be honest with you, it came maybe two or three years where before it should have come for another a company of our size. But that was that was a huge challenge. You know, we've got to make that one thing that's wow, and that was a huge challenge. The other, the the personally, the other challenge was I've never worked in the private sector. I I oh. joined I joined the army as a young kid. I got out of the army. I joined the police department. I've been with the police department for almost twenty nine years now. And I've never worked, I've never had to work in the private sector, which means I've never had to really deal with customers and, <laughs> and, you know, and, and there's a certain lack of punctuality, maybe a certain lack of, you know, we're very militaristic. Hey, if we're going to yeah. meet at five o'clock, it's five o'clock. And if we're going to, you know, uh, well, these meetings are five thirty, maybe, you know, those, those kind of things kind of, kind of drive, drove me a little crazy at first, you know, I'm super organized. I might be messy. But I'm super organized, you know, and uh, to be to be um, uh, to, to have to I was outside of my comfort zone for the first couple of years. And to be honest with you, there's still times I, 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 you know, that's why they say I'm, I'm so com I'm so warm and cuddly. I get, I get pissed quick for nothing. You know, <laughs> it's supposed to, we're supposed to how dare these guys be late for their meeting? You know, relax, bro. Relax. Oh, bro, that's disrespect. You know, so, you know, and he's t he's settling me down. I mean, he's a. He's a bigger hothead at times than I am, you know. But that was that was part of the biggest challenge was learning to work outside of a law enforcement environment. Mm -hmm. You know, um, <clears throat> your your impression of Hector is so spot on. I can't believe it. <laughs> it's like Hector is inside you. Who like, are we talking? Or I'm sorry, not Hector. Eric. Yeah, you, I thought you were I'm talking like, to somebody. Else. You freaked me out, man. <laughs> yeah. No, sorry. <laughs> Uh, your impression of Eric is perfect. I can't get over how good your impression of him is. Well, it, it's I'm not. Don't get me wrong. I if you if you expect me to do him and tell a joke, it's uh, I, I'm going to lose you. But the, but the bro, come on, bro, bro. Uh, and yeah, then, exactly. You know, and then you know he talks to you in non sequiturs. You know he's uh, you know he's, he's funny. He just he's called me. You know he, he's called me at the weirdest hours. Just like hey, did you see that thing? Yeah, yeah. All right, I'll talk to you tomorrow. What, what you, I've got to remember. I've got to think. What the hell is he talking about? Oh, that's we're, he's picked up. A, he'll co he'll continue a conversation he's, he's from done four that. hours ago. From four hours ago. Hey, you remember what I'm talking about? Yeah. Come on, bro. And you know. And then you know the thing is he. Uh, <laughs> it's sometimes he's incredibly lucid. Incredibly lucid, bro. It's this. It happened like this and like that and like this. And then you thought you see him the next day. Hey, we talked about doing this. I don't remember that. What are, you, what are you talking about, bro? <laughs> so this happened at first. So I took to taking notes and dating my notes. You know, uh, the, the, you said this. Bro, we said we were going to do it this way. I didn't say that. You said it on August 18th. Oh, I, I don't remember saying that. So then I, hey, can you sign here? I'm not signing anything, bro. Bro, what's wrong with you? you know? uh, but now, now I'm trying to do the voice. I can't do it. But uh, uh, he's, let me tell you something. Uh, we're so different, but... I really, I really have enjoyed working for him. And to be honest with you, any success that I've garnered 
through this industry, I owe it to him. And I've told him, I've told mm. him before because, you know, he could have called anybody to come work for him with no experience. And, you know, and that guy could be where I'm at right now. So I'm very, very lucky. And I'm very thankful that, uh, that I am where I am. And I owe it to him. And I've, and I've always told him that. That wasn't even a question, but that was a great answer. Uh, That's a mu- so- that-, <laughs> that was my mushy moment. Yeah, you did good. Uh, Skip says the episode title should be Hector is Inside You. I noticed as I was saying that, that that was just wrong. Um, but at least That's I didn't a- say Eric was inside you. That's another sexy beast right there. <laughs> Let me tell you uh, something. If it, was, it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have Facebook. He is, he is what keeps me, he's, he, I know, I wake up going, I know that he is going to say some shit today. Let me see what he's going to say. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, <laughs> that's awesome. Poor totally Hector. Awesome. Yeah, you know, uh, that's awesome. Uh, let me just, let me just read that over and over again. <laughs> you know, he's, and I, I like him very much. He was, uh, believe it or not, he was one of the first guys I met when I started going to Nicaragua. And uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of their cigar. I'm a big fan of a lot of guys' cigars. But yeah. uh, I really, I, I really, uh, I like everything they've done over there. Their, their model, their factory, their their whole style. I, I think it's very, very cool. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I'm gonna let Jason have a question and try to stop giggling about. <laughs> yeah, I'm, in, we, I, I'm inside, inside you. you. <laughs> <laughs> we, we talked briefly about the um, Espinosa lounges. Um, wh- where are those at? So that if people are in the area, have you noticed that Jason? Jason only asks me questions that I have to remember. Shit. All right. Uh, okay. That's fine. <laughs> That's fine. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Jason's like that substitute teacher. Okay, we have a quiz, uh, bro. Uh, all right. Uh, That's why I have, keep them around. We have uh, we have West Coast cigars in California. We have Blue Smoke in Dallas. We have uh, Executive in Kentucky. We have uh, a new one uh, in Atlanta, Life and Times. We have, uh, that's four. I think we're missing. All right, we have one in, oh, my God. We have one in Jacksonville. I'm Not in Jacksonville. We have one in uh, Pensacola. We have one in Ohio. And I want to say, I think we have two in Ohio. So, but, you know, here's, I, and just to defend myself, Jason, uh, <laughs> I, I don't do I, I'm not a sale I don't do sales so I really don't deal a lot with the stores I just my 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 concern is mostly the cigars but I think I nailed them all so <laughs> I've got I've got them all that's oh, good seventy percent is passing oh and then there's a the 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 Twin Smokes is like an unofficial lounge I think the downstairs the next to the porta potty is uh, also our little lounge area and let me tell you something uh, I'm gonna be honest with you. wherever he's wherever he's at wherever he sets up shop that day that's a lounge. I'm telling you, this guy is, he's a, he's a force of nature, bro. This guy's a force of nature. If I had to be a rep, we would die of hunger. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're a cigar guy, not a sales guy. Absolutely. And you know, I, I, I and it's so much easier because the tobacco doesn't talk back. The tobacco <laughs> doesn't talk back and it doesn't ask for anything. <laughs> it just, that that you depends know. who you ask. Well, I've heard a lot of people say they talk to the tobacco. Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> just, just for, don't Hold forget. Listen. Don't forget, Hector's inside you. <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna, that's my new favorite bit. Uh, Brian Clay wants to know how much thought goes into graphics and package design for the different oh. products. And I want to know who, who d- takes care of that. All right. Uh, Brian Clay is an old friend of mine from, who retired from the police department a couple years ago. And since he's retired, he's gained like 10 years back on his life. He's just very <laughs> envious when I see this guy on Facebook. Uh and a great photographer, by the way. All right, so our our idea, we, believe it or not, the hardest, and I, I, I've heard Eric say this a dozen times, the hardest part of the cigar is not making the cigar. It's coming up with the name and the yeah. packaging idea. Uh, we have, uh, for some of these little special things that we've done, we'll go with a name, and then we'll try to find some packaging that'll go with it. Like the alibi was great, because we wanted yeah. something, you know, the alibi... Uh, uh, you're, it's for a club to be a member of that club, you know, so you don't have to be at home and explain what you're doing at that club. Oh, I have my alibi. So we went in that direction. We made it look like a little pass card. Uh, for our core line stuff, we, we wanted to keep it cl- clean, you know, with the, with, the, with the Espinosa, you know, to make it look kind of traditional. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Larange, the Larange went in that direction because we were using a Brazilian wrapper and we wanted to use a Portuguese word for orange. So we went in that direction. 
uh, the ones that have been really fun, you know, they've been the 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 the, the backroom series ones. Eminent Domain, after having to explain it for a while, uh, why do you want to name a cigar Eminent Domain? Because we're taking over your humidor. We're putting, you know, we're taking this <laughs> this right here is our shelf. This is Eminent Domain for us. So the ideas come from, you know, what the project is, and then we'll kick it around. We have a we had a graphic artist full time for a while, and uh, now he's on contract. He's on an ad hoc basis with us. But he has, uh, he has, we've retained him because he has a lot of institutional memory. He's been with us since the beginning. So he knows the things we've tried, the things we, we tried to do that didn't work out. And uh, he's, you know, uh, like all artists, I don't know if you've ever dealt with artists, you've got to, you, you talk to him about the idea, then he gets excited, he starts to draw, but then you got to put blinders on him because he'll be drawing and then, ooh, a squirrel. You know, <laughs> you got you to keep him focused, you know. Uh, and Eric is not a guy, in my experience, Eric's not a guy that you got to tell him about the project. I've noticed that from the beginning. We have to do it on the down low, uh, covert, you know, do do it, have it done, and then show it to him. And he's going to go, yeah, I like this, or I don't like this. Can you change this? And then we're there. But if, yeah. we, had to tell, if we had to tell him about what we wanted to do, he, he's got to see it. Which that's fine. There are people who there are people who, who do better seeing it because once he sees it, then he can you know he can add his two cents. So instead of having to, because he doesn't have the patience to sit there through the through the development process. You know he's got a he's got seventy four phone calls and ten cigars to chew on. He doesn't have time for all that. <laughs> all right, Jason, go for it. You're up. Okay, so what's um? Do you have a favorite kind of tobacco? Just randomly. All right, I'm gonna tell you I. When I first started working with Eric, I hated Hawano. I hated Hawano. I liked everything. I, I liked everything but Hawano rap. Broadleaf and Mexican and this and that. I just, I, I didn't. I was just so tired of Hawano because Hawano. Six years ago, everybody had a Hawano. Everybody was pushing Hawano, yeah. Hawano, Hawano. Uh, I have. I am a. I'm a huge fan. I like Sumatra a lot, and I do. I like Broadleaf an awful lot. I still have. I've still kept my. But I've really. Uh, the the tobacco that I really like. You're talking wrapper or you're talking filler? Just anything. Look, kind I, of spur the moment thought. Oh, okay. Well, at least it wasn't a test question. Like, what's the name of our rep in Alaska? Uh, uh, it's uh, by the way, his name is Enoch Johnson. All right. So, uh, I you know I I like I like Nicaraguan tobacco. To be honest with you, I I love tobacco from Esteli. I I, mm-hmm. I love the strength and the smell of it. And rappers, man, I'm telling you, I, I, I don't, I, I don't have a, I don't have one that I don't like. I like, I like all tobacco. I'm not gonna lie to you, I, I do like all tobacco. I really do. Except Sorry, some man. candela. Uh, and no, now <laughs> I, you know, some candela, candela's tough, man. <clears throat> candela's tough. Candela in Connecticut's tough. But no, now I've, I've embraced Havano, and uh, I'm a little over Mexican right now because it got a little over. hot. Yeah, it years. just got it got a little, you know, it was like it was like IPAs a couple of years ago. Everybody had an IPA, you know. He didn't have mm-hmm. he didn't have a he didn't have a regular ale. We had an, he had seven IPAs, you know. I I I'm, I'm I've embraced Havano again, but I country wise uh, I love Nicaraguan tobacco. I love the tobacco from Estelle. I really do. All right, I've got a good cigar geek question that I just thought of. What do you think is going to be the tobacco of the the wrapper of the year for this show? For the 2018 IPCPR. You know, I was having this conversation just the other day with uh, with a couple of, with a couple of the guys in the collective cigar media. I can see. I I think uh, I think uh, Havano's coming. I think it's going to be Havano again. Uh, yeah. Havano and Broadleaf. I think Broadleaf might make. Uh, but Broadleaf's already been out there. I mean, it's just I don't see. You know, I don't see Cameroon. With this very expensive, you know, it's very expensive yeah. and it's hard to work with. You know, maybe Sumatra, maybe Sumatra makes an appearance. I think Hawano is always going to be a staple because I think, so, yeah. I think almost every introductory line, even though you know the FDA, oh, there's no more new introductory line. Every Hawano is everybody's introductory cigar, followed closely by by the Connecticut, and then some kind of dark wrapper or Maduro or whatever the hell they call it. Uh, I think that it may be you may see Broadleaf and, and Sumatra again. But I'll tell you where I think we're going to go is I think that the, the Churchill may reappear. Maybe not in its 7 by 50 reincarnation, but I've, I've noticed in the last year or so that we're seeing a lot of 6 by 48s 
which is yeah, cigar, those, that kind of short Churchill kind of size, which is a cigar, which I'm going to tell you, I think that and I'm not taking credit for anything, but I, it's a size that we started with the alibi and then we went to the Kaixa. We just think it's a, it's not the Churchill. It's not a Toro. It's long enough, but it's, it's, it's comfortably in your hand. I think the six by 48 is a size that you're going to, you know, the Toros, you're always going to see Toros. You're always going to see Robustos. I don't think six by sixties are, you know, I, I, I don't think that's that's going to come back. No, I think the the guys in the seven by seventy niche are there. Uh, yeah, the, the, that's. I, I think it's going to be that that short Churchill. I think that's the size you're going to see a lot of. I think Lanceros Lanceros saw their thing about a year ago. Maybe yeah, it topped out about a year ago. So I I, I think six by forty eights were it's going to be the new size. I think I I'm I'm going to go with a different answer for that. Mm. Even though I didn't ask myself this question, I think Lonsdale's Lonsdale's need to. Uh, they're they're starting to get really popular again. It seems like, but you know, for your yeah, I, I think the Lonsdale is a great size. But uh, this is something I know when I was a, when I before I joined you know before I started working for Eric and when mm. I was a cigar consumer, guys guys who smoke Coronas and and uh, and Lanceros, the the retailers would say these guys don't buy boxes. Yeah, you know why they don't buy boxes because their cigar is always in stock. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people don't smoke those. A lot of people don't smoke those. So maybe that's different now because I know there was a there's a trend. You know, you have a store in Texas. All these, you know, that's that's the oh, Lancero yeah. store. You know, uh, guys ask me all the time, hey man, how come you can't make a Corona? I wish. Eric will tell you that Hector wishes I could make a, a, a our all of our brands in every size of major uh, imaginable. We'd need a twenty thousand foot warehouse. I mean, yeah. just we we can't accommodate everybody. You know, so. You know, so that's why the guy who likes Toros and the guy who likes Churchills, you know, six by forty is perfect. That's that's the way I look at it. I think that's just a great size. Yeah, I like I, the forty eight. I like that size. <clears throat> it's just it it's noticeably smaller than a than a fifty, kind of like uh-huh. in your mouth. So it, it sort of satisfies the the smaller ring gauge guys and your traditional robusto Toro smoker likes it too. So I I, I agree. I, I I really I lost myself there. Oh, here I am. So I know I, I really agree. I think, uh, and it's a little bit, it's a little bit bigger than a Corona Gorda. You know, I, I think it's perfect. I think it's a great size. It's personally my favorite size. My favorite In these, size. These uh, colder months, I love like a good, like a four and a half by forty-eight or something like that. You know, it's funny you say that. Mm-hmm. I almost, I almost said Rothschilds there, but I think that's, I think that's a seasonal thing too. But, you know, uh, Eric tells me, he goes, bro, you know, the guy that's up in Philadelphia, it's like 15 degrees. You know, <laughs> he doesn't have he doesn't have an hour to smoke a cigar. He got 20 minutes. So, <laughs> so <laughs> he got 20 minutes to smoke it. So a Rothschilds or a Robusto Toro. But I think a Rothschilds even, that's a very cool size. That's a very cool I size. Agree. One of the cigars on my, one of my favorite cigars that I had this year that I had on my, on my little list that, you know, I thought Dion makes a Rothschilds, which is oh, incredible. Yeah. Oh yeah, and it's and what a what a great little smoke, you know, and and and, and the price is right, and, and it's the problem is that here in Miami, it's a Rothschild, you know, you you're gonna end up buying two of them because you know yeah. <laughs> the weather's nice, you know, I need another one of these, you know, I went through the quick. Yeah, I I uh, I keep a box of those on hand most of the time because that's kind of like one of my go-to smokes. I don't smoke a lot of them in the summer. <laughs> Skip thinks the new size, uh, the size of 2018 is gonna be the tuna can, two by eighty. <laughs> the Vienna sausage. He's a, the Vienna sausage can. It's not very. It's not very long, but man, it's wide. <laughs> that's a funny fucker, right? There. Oh, that's six. I'm sorry. Oh man, I'm You're sorry. Me. We're almost to I, the end here. I'm sorry. Our uh, our last segment here is brought to you by Drew Estate. Uh, smoke some Drew Estate cigars. Uh, the I've. I talked about it, I think, last night on the show. Uh, their Liga Pravada tins are hitting the market now. And so if you haven't smoked those little baby Ligas, uh, you're missing out. Go buy some tins. They're That's cheap a good and they're delicious. thing to smoke when it's in the teens out. You can get through one of those quickly. Yeah, when you're bundled up like Jason. <laughs> I feel so bad. I'm looking at Jason, and you know what? I almost feel bad for him. Except for the no, it's, it's not too bad. <laughs> if, if it were in like the low 30s, I'd be bitching, but... We're we're still above uh, forty, so I'm good. He said one. <laughs> yeah. Um, I had to like 
I'm getting hot because I don't know if it's just Hector or if it's this new heater that I got. Hector's uh, inside you. Hector's inside yeah. you. Uh, Skip also says perfect, Grand Perfectos are going to corner the $100 plus market. <laughs> the unicorn size. The uh, Yeah, the unicorn size. I, I still want to be... see somebody make one of those giant Fred Flintstone perfectos. You know, that's, I think that's the word of the year. That's this year's word. Unicorn is going to be this year's word. Mm-hmm. We're here. We're going to hear that a lot. When There's Steve... going to be a lot of people getting about $40 cigars that are their new unicorn. <sighs> Oy. Oy All right. Jason, uh, I'm going to let you ask the next question. Okay. So, um, true or false? A little preview for uh, next week. You're going to be on sharing our pairings. Yep. Um, what's what's some popular pairings you like to have with some well, of the I'm, cigars? I'm going to go. I was thinking of going uh, cold press with the coffee. I was going to go Lane Coffee, but since he's not here today for the interview, we're just going to go. Uh, we're going to go rum. We're going to go rum. I'm going to go rum. Uh, yeah, it's three pairings, correct? Is it three? Yes. Is it three? So I'm going to go rum, uh, and I'm going to go porter. And I might just go cold coffee. I have a cigar that goes really good with like a nice coffee. I think so it, it's uh, we're pairing the Murcia Lago next week. Uh huh. I I think it's gonna go really well with a porter. I think a porter is the right call. Well, I've got a we. I, I've been really. I've become coffee a coffee fiend lately. I mean, I, I love coffee to begin with, but uh, I think uh, cold coffee to start. Is it beer before liquor or liquor before beer? I never remember that. I never it's, remember. It's, it. I don't follow. Yeah, it. I don't follow the rule. So uh, yeah, I'm definitely. Uh, I've got a porter there that I want to share from a a brewery here in uh, in my in South Florida. He's from Fort Lauderdale. That he went to La Zona Palooza and he brewed a beer. Uh, he brewed two beers. He brewed a uh, Warhead Ale, where he oh, took nice. <laughs> which which event he wanted it to be more of a, a stout, but it ended up being a little bit like a sour. Uh, you know, uh, it was like a, a Warhead Stout needs a. Uh, oh, what's that? Really? Uh, it'll, it'll come to me. Uh, really, it was really thick. Like a brandy wine. It was brandy wine meets uh, stout. It was that kind of. Uh, yeah. And then uh, he uh, then he made a Laranja beer where he used, you know, some uh, blood red orange. And the, uh, the beer was really hot. Man, that beer was that beer was on point. That beer Everybody on says point. liquor before beer. Never liquor fear. before. Never fear. OK, so it'll be. So we'll start with uh, the coffee, have the liquor and then the beer. I'm um, cool. I'm looking forward to that. I'm going to take that day off. I work nights. And I don't think they'll like. I took this afternoon off because I, I don't think the department will want me getting getting lit up at the yeah. <laughs> getting lit up at the office. You know, <laughs> they might look down on that a little bit. They may look down on that. Yeah. Um, Kevin has Halazuka, I think is yes. how you pronounce his name. Uh, yes. He says that was a good beer. The oh, oh that's the right. He went, beers. I guess uh, he, was he was there. He's. I think he's one of the Fat Ash brothers, if I'm not mistaken. I think he's one of the the guys in Fat Ash. Oh, and, cool. We just did a we did a little cigar for their for their fat ash bash, yeah. Which was yeah, that cigar is pretty good. <laughs> just gonna just gonna tell you right, I think that cigar is pretty good. Okay, I, I might have to uh, see if they've got any of those left after the show. <laughs> if All not, right. you if, if not can't sell probably has like a hundred in his car. I'm just, sure he does. Just, yeah, can't sell one. <laughs> I'm going through to see if we missed any questions that I uh, see forgot. if Skip said see if Skip said anything charming. <laughs> Well, he did say "aw shucks" when you were saying that you liked his cigars. That was about he's a it. Hum- he's a humble cat, man. He's a humble guy. What do you want me to tell you? He is. All right, Jason. Why don't you ask one more question while I look through these to see if there's any that I missed? Okay. Well, we'll do kind of as as we're getting to the end. Where where can people go to find out more about Espinosa cigars? Where can they find you on social media? Well, I don't. If they if they want to find me on social media, I mean, if you're that bored, it's Hector. <laughs> I, 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 Hector, I'll follow you. You're not, it's not going to be that hard to find. But we have a we have a website, uh, espinosacigars.com, uh, with uh, with new material. We've uploaded some new material uh, with our stuff from uh, from the show last year. Uh, we'll be updating it. Uh, not only does it have information on every cigar, it also tells you where you can get some of the stuff that we some of the specialty stuff that we make for some retailers. And some of the stuff we do for the online clients, uh, and then we have a we have a Twitter. <laughs> we have an I don't think we have a Twitter. We have an Instagram, and we have a Facebook page. Espinosa Cigars, you know, <laughs> regular social media stuff. Uh, Eric, if you really want to have fun, you follow Eric's page. Yeah, he puts you know he'll 
he just, like I said, he just puts things that are like, you know, I don't want to say the Chris, Christopher Walken esque like, but just like, okay, <laughs> picture of the dog. All right, I got. And then, uh, you know, he had a picture of his dog for Christmas or New Year's, and I'm like, okay, put a picture of his dog. Had like 150 likes on that picture. I can't get, <laughs> I can't get 10 likes on anything, you know. And he's he gets 150 likes, you know. But so yeah, you can follow us and and, and his son as well, Eric Junior, is on on Facebook. We're all. We all have a Facebook page, and we're all linked to the master page. But the website is really the website is really the, is coming along very nicely. Good. Uh, Skip's trying to get his weasel on. He says he he doesn't have any Lizona cigars right now. Uh, maybe he'll trade you some for food. Uh, Chico, well, let me. Not a bad. Sorry, that, go ahead. That that Gringo Cocina is no joke, dog. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> that Gringo Cocina is no joke. Yeah, I got. I got you, baby. I got you. I got you. I mean, if, <laughs> if, if Jack if Jack didn't empty him out when he was there a couple of weeks ago, I, I got you. Uh, Chico Ray says Terrence is currently with Espinosa, correct? I think he's talking about Terrence Riley. Terrence Riley is with, is uh, with he went uh, to, Casa, uh, Fernandez Casa Fernandez slash Aganorsa. Yes. Um, yeah, uh, Skip's Gringo Casino, man. Uh, I love looking at those pictures. And you I... Know, he made uh he made uh, when I was there the last time I he invited me to his home I uh he made uh he made Mexican food but what I really want is that Frito pie I've never had that but he's oh, made man. a couple You're of things that, that looks pretty damn good <laughs> it it's looks good. <laughs> yeah it looks pretty damn good um I I went to his house like about a year ago um and I got a little preview in the middle of the night of Gringo Cocina you know uh, he moved he lives over there by La Zona now so it's uh. Now I got, you know, now he's got, now he can't, now he can't duck me. So now, you know, I'll just walk, skip, open the door, skip, you know, I, I'll be able to, I'll be able to weasel hard now. Nice. Uh, any, uh, any closing questions before we finish up, Jason? Um, random question. Um, so you, you did, you did the Warhead and we recently saw the Warhead 3 Lancero. Um, can we look forward to a Warhead 4 or maybe a come back I'm, around to some of the other Warheads? Uh, Warhead 4 Warhead four will be available this year. Warhead nice, 4 nice. will be available. Guess Breaking what size. news. Guess what size? Ooh, Guess the size. Uh, oh, 6x48. Uh, My man. <laughs> there you go. 6x48 <laughs> box press. 6x48 awesome. box Ooh, press. Oh, awesome. Yeah, it's, I think, uh, you know, it's that Lancero, that Lancero, was I thought that Lancero was really good, a box press Lancero, and right like again we got lucky we hit the we hit that Lancero right when the Lancero craze was you know was about the was hitting you know we 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 got very we got very lucky with that so we're very we're very happy with that and the Warhead's been the Warhead was our very first special project that we did when we uh, when we put Espinosa together and it's it's very near and dear to us because you know uh, none of those guys are prior service but I'm prior service. That's why when I, I, I heard that you guys were on Armed Forces Radio, that's great. I mean, that's how I saw the Super Bowl uh, when I got to <laughs> Korea. I, I saw the I saw the the Dolphins first play the 49ers on Armed Forces. I, I heard it on the radio as we got to the to the receiving barracks, and then we saw it on television, which was the first time I ever saw TV without commercials, which was which was very pretty, it was very cool. <laughs> and uh, it was a great Super Bowl for like seven minutes. Miami got the ball, jumped, run, ran down the field, scored on San Francisco. I went. This the route is on, and that was the last time I cheered during that game. So, it was, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and it was a long time ago. It was 1985, <laughs> January of 1985. That was a long, long time ago. But yeah, we're uh, we're excited about Warhead, and we have we have uh, we have a couple of other exciting things that uh, can't talk about now. But I uh, we're very excited about them. I mean, just. Uh, Things that we, things that you can find them if you look. We, I mean, we put them in the hopper two years ago. Yeah. But it's, uh, we're very, very excited about it. It's, uh, like I said, we really got to work extra hard this year to do. I think we got to work twice as hard to get to to, to get half of the success we had this year because it gets it's harder every year. It really does. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, thanks for joining us, Hector. Everybody who's watching, uh, make sure to tune in next week to sharing our pairings. It'll be Wednesday night uh, at 5 p.m. Pacific. 8 p.m. Eastern. Uh, we're going to be pairing some Lazona cigars, and it's going to be fantastic. Uh, but thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Thanks for all your comments and questions and snark in the comments. Uh, we appreciate it. 
everybody listening on the Armed Forces Radio Network, of course, thank you for your service. We appreciate you guys out there doing things we're not built to do. Everybody have a great and safe weekend. We'll be back next week.